No. Hello, everybody. Zero interest. Uh, Ruby. And that was the intro for our alien audience. <laughs> anyway, Ruby, season four, episode eight. Uh, a much needed talk, a long needed talk, something like that. Was the name? There was a talk that needed to be had. Yeah. And. Was had. Exposition, exposition, brought you yeah, ASAP. So, <laughs> yeah, basically, uh, we start with, oh, hey, crows explain the plot now to them. Yep, maidens and stuff, and Jean is all stroppy about it because he wants to make Crow the bad guy. He wants somebody to blame. Yeah. That's not himself. And... Yeah, thing I appreciate. Crow is not going to have patience for that shit, so he says, no, fuck you. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> almost immediately. He's like, no, she chose it herself. Thank you very much. We gave her a choice. And you were there when she chose. You literally so, had to say, I want to do this. So, yeah. Uh, there's four maidens. Yeah, that's a thing. Uh, Hell, the, I'm probably point after out you. Even... Ozpin explicitly needed to see, hear her say yes before he would do anything. Yeah. So, just wanted to throw that out there. Ruby, you got silver eyes. They're after you. You know how to use it. You're, you are got a price on your head. Not necessarily know how to use it, but you've used it, so it's proven yeah, that you Yeah, you're can. capable of using it. Oh. And then uh, he starts to go into an explanation of, well, he talks about the gods. There's yeah, okay. So, there are a lot of gods, apparently, as, as far as religion is concerned, there's a lot, but there are two that are real, and they happen according to be to brothers. According to Ozpin. Yeah, according to Ozpin, and they happen to be brothers. Guess where we've heard that before? You remember when Ozpin asked what Pyrrha's favorite fairy tale was? Oh, uh, yeah? The ones she mentioned was the two brothers. Oh... Okay, I that's, only twigged into that when we were watching this episode, and I was like, I'm going to wait until the fucking summary to prove myself. <laughs> wow. So that she, one, that... Match, yeah. she knows the two brothers? She's a good candidate. Sure, okay. <laughs> um, so you got God of Light and God of Darkness. God of Light's like, yay, life, happiness. God of Darkness like, yeah, no, I want to just walk into your Lego set and kick it down. Basically. And <laughs> it's the it's literally the bratty kid brother. God of it's it's actually me and my brother when that period of time when he wanted to, when he was super into Minecraft and I would just join and destroy his stuff because I'm a jerk. <laughs> he gets so mad. But uh just like me and my brother, they decided that they were going to create something together. Well, in, uh, in our case, first, the little brother created the Grim, something yeah. that shared his passion for destruction. And Big Brother was like, "No, nah, dude, not cool. Come on, <laughs> that's just that's just rude." Mm. And so they decided to create something together, something capable of this life or destruction mm. choice. Knowledge. Mm. All this stuff. Yeah. I'm going to point out something else. The reason this is probably such a sucky world is... Well, assuming that any of this is actually true. Um, the little brother created a force of destruction, the Grim. Big mm -hmm. Brother didn't actually create a force of creation that was purely for creation. No, he just was like, I just got these, these animals and stuff. That they'll keep on living. There is no unambiguous force for good in this world. Only an unambiguous force for evil. And then and then the ambiguous human aspect. Yep. It makes me wonder why Grimm are attracted to human emotions and why they hunt down humans if Grimm came before humans. There are some holes in this... Uh, 
Let's go. Because they don't attack animals. They don't attack animals. So mm-hmm. how are they agents of destruction if the only thing they destroy are humans? That didn't exist Would... before they were created. Yeah. That's yeah. A little weird. That that's a it's a bit of a hole that's bothering me. Mm. Yeah. Like unless like the Grim were repurposed or something. I don't know. Could be. I mean, could be they are going after the greatest force of creation, which would still be humans, logically, because they they're have just no creatures of pure in creation. Destruction but, if also, cre- but... but if they're pure destruction, then they would just destroy everything. So, you wouldn't just. Maybe it's like. You know, it's the computer uh, logic of it. You have to stop the things that are creating things first before you destroy everything else. I guess. I don't know. This seems weird. Mm. Uh, And so he ends that by saying, yeah, there are four artifacts out there. Um, You know, four four super special artifact thingies. And uh, if you get these MacGuffins, then you have the power to do anything, basically. It's, it'll be bad if she get if Salem gets all four. Yeah, and they are hidden in the academies because that's, you know, they will constantly be surrounded by trained soldiers, warriors, whatever, and hidden, like constant protection, but also hidden. So it makes me happens. wonder: uh, Did they get Ozpin's artifact? I don't think they did. Salem was looking for it last we heard, if you remember. When she was saying, "Hey, Cinda, did you kill the dude?" Because I'm get, yes. I, I'm getting like, I'm getting the feeling that the artifact was like Ozpin's staff, Kane. Sorry about that. And we're back. Yeah. So the thing is, uh, what I was thinking of is that remember we saw at the end of the the previous season when we had Crow and he had Ozpin's like staff with him Mm -hmm. his cane and now all of a sudden we have uh little baby deku farmer boy now has ospin's voice in his head Mm. i'm thinking that uh uh one option is that ospin's artifact is of knowledge and so his He's being passed down to him, I guess. I do assume that Ozpin's artifact that he is keeping is the one of knowledge. Um, partially based on who he is, partially based on the clockwork shit that he has in his office, or had, right, yeah. I suppose. Um, mm-hmm. That seems the most likely candidate. Crow still has his staff and they still haven't found the relic so there is an argument to be made that that is correct also the artifacts in the, for some reason I associate them with a the green glow and that was something Ozpin could do while he was wielding his cane if you remember the fight with Cinder at the end mm-hmm. of the season yeah so it's entirely plausible I have no idea <laughs> so cause like the only way that Ozpin's consciousness could blend into the mind of this boy and this is something that's been happening over and over again over the years in a cycle is the only way that's possible is either A, it's an artifact or B, Osbin was a maiden so or C, that's his semblance a sem- hmm. I don't know that seems kind of esoteric like someone's semblance being bad luck Maybe it, it's only because there's a lot. Because like the thing is, because the thing is with his unique fighting cell, I was and, and the whole super energy stuff. Hmm. I was thinking maybe that would be more tied to a semblance or something, but I don't know. Or as you say, that might have been his artifact. Or that's the, the or that's the artifact and semblance is to pass down his. But I don't know. There's it a could lot be of things that could be going on here, and we just don't. Yeah. Know. So it there's it gives you a lot to think about with the uh, just this short information. It wasn't uh, short. It wasn't short. This was a twenty minute episode. Fifteen minutes of it was exposition. This was not well, short. Not fifteen <laughs> minutes of it, like the first eight minutes. 
<laughs> yeah, and then it did a Blake interlude for five, and then we were back to this. So. And then we went to Blake, and Blake's mom was like, hey, you can go talk to your dad. You don't have to be so awkward. Mm-hmm. And Blake's like, oh, I'm awkward. And so then, like, I was I went to reach my glasses. <laughs> I wasn't wearing glasses. Um, so she goes in there, and, you know, it's the awkward daughter hasn't seen her dad in a while he, he tries to treat her like a kid and put the sugar in her tea and she's like oh, I don't drink with the sugar. oh you know it's kind of a really stilted conversation but it turns into yeah. something it was really stilted but stilted in a kind of genuine way and that was yeah very nice and it came across as kind of a, just a really heartwarming art heart of you know I should have listened to you I shouldn't have called you guys cowards and ran off with the white fang. I should have left when you guys left. Mm. Yeah, you know? This fills in a lot of blanks as to the circumstances of how that whole thing shook out. Yeah. You know, and it ends with, you know, her dad saying, well, why'd you, why'd you go and abandon your friends? And then the door falls down and, oh, hey, it's sung. Mm. Hey! And dad's like, I Hmm. Yeah, that was not a good moment for Son, both in who he is as a character and also just because that really wasn't. Hmm. So. Voice acting was also a little hammed up there. I mean, it's Michael Jones, so that kind of makes sense, but still, even so, it was a bit much. So, yeah, we cut back to uh, Ruby Party. And they're, they're talking more exposition plot stuff. Jean's got some beef, and that beef will not go away. Uh, and, you know, Crow finally admits why he hasn't been traveling with them the entire time. is because his semblance is bad luck. It's literally bad luck. And it will affect his enemies in combat, but also all of his friends. Mm-hmm. So when he says, Ruby, stay back. He means it. (laughs) Yeah. So this is where I get to say um, I did see a video someone else did uh, of all of the moments where Crow's bad luck is hinted at. Um, I saw that video like pop up in my recommendations like I'm not going to click on it. (laughs) So yeah, when he's drinking at the bar, the Crow bar, by the way, that was the Mm -hmm. name of the place. um, And he's watching the fight and then he leaves And a glass falls off the shelf, and the bartender says, gee darn it. An example. Next, when he's fighting Winter, and during that fight, um, Ironwood shows up. Bad luck. luck. And when um, they're fighting in uh, Vale, and Crow is there, and he's like fighting things, and Ironwood's there, and he's killing things, and he says, all clear. And then Crow kills the one uh, Grim that Ironwood just happened to not see. So that was Crow covering for the bad luck he's creating. Yeah. <clears throat> kind of a, a crappy semblance to have. It really, really... Well... Mm, like, on the one... like it's, 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 it's on a, his it's own a, and fighting it's Grim, a, yeah. it's great. Otherwise... It's a, mm, no, not so much. And it makes me think... Remember when we saw that picture and they were a, a team, Team Strike, or whatever, Stark. STR Stark? Yeah, him being on that team probably didn't have a lot of good things come about. I, yeah, I mean, considering that, how how yeah, what happened to that team just in general? Yeah, that's. Hmm. Yeah. And that's... Remember when I said that there's a good reason he drinks? <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine what he's constantly thinking, having that semblance? He would be thinking... Is it my ev- fault? Everything bad that happens around him, is it because of me? Yeah. Everything. And it really makes for a very interesting character. Uh, it makes me think of... Uh... This is kind of a, a, a little bit of a poll, but um, Teen Titans show, you remember that? Didn't watch it. Okay, so there was a character on it called Jinx, mm. and her power was to cause other people to have bad luck. Yep. 
I'm and, familiar, though. But, I haven't watched the show. But like, that's what I think of. But, like, she could control it mm-hmm. better, you know? He has he cannot turn it off. Yeah. It's a good example of, you know, the self-effacing character that's like, everything bad that happens is because of me. Usually that's really annoying because, generally speaking, it's not. But this is mm-hmm. an example where it's quite he possible does, it could be because of him. He doesn't know. So that makes for that makes Crow a much more interesting character, I think. Hmm. And it makes me a little bit salty that there aren't more fix with him being a main character because everything's Jean. Well, there's there's some fun stuff you can do with Jean. Unfortunately, I did read a really really good fic with Jean as the main character, but that's. Oh, I was reading a really, really good fic with Sean as the main character, and I was like, yeah, what was it called? Well, it was the it was recommended on the podcast or something. I can't remember. Okay, there's a few of those, but oh, it was the like Forged Destiny or something. All oh, right, I was actually reading another story by the same writer called uh, Professor Ark. Where his yeah, I saw that. He fakes his way into Beacon too well and ends up being hired as a teacher. It's really good. It's really good. <laughs> Okay, I'll have to check that one out. I've literally been binge reading that for three days. It's amazing. All right, Ruby fan fiction aside, because well, uh, what else are we gonna talk about? Fucking fan fiction writers and <laughs> yeah, because we we we're get I'm getting into it. He's already been knee deep in it. Yeah, waist I, deep, I, I really chest want deep. To get onto my next chapter, but uh, yeah. Uh, we cut back to yeah, after that whole exchange. Of Blake and Blake's like, what do you even want to tell me, son? I'm, I'm, I'm here to rest with my family. You know, <laughs> combo breaker. You know, it's just. <laughs> and then he's like, but it's the white thing. Your mom, your mom said something. To... And she's like, I don't want. Nope, 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 nope. And he's like, but they, they don't wear masks in Menagerie. And I saw one with a mask the other day. And she's like, ah, I don't want to hear about this. And grabs his phone and throws it off mm. the patio. It's kind of rude. Mm. You know, it's scroll. You know, it's, it's, you know, those are pretty expensive, I guess. And then they look and right there spying on them the whole time was one of the White Fang. Yeah. And... Blake goes off and chases it. Son uh, says, hey, I was right. I was right. The White Fang of dicks, and I'm going to go bring your daughter back. Which can either mean the White Fang just kidnapped your daughter or what actually happened. Mm. It's just to see how that plays out. Yeah. Also, question. Why did that White Fang member wear a mask at all? You know... That literally only made them stand out. That was the only thing it did. If they wore a black mask, it would have been something else. Like, they would have worked. But I guess they're just too proud mm. of their of their affiliation. Might be. They need stealth masks. You know, stealth if they're wearing... Masks. Like, if you're wearing all black, you need something else. You need, like, a go full ninja, you know? You get a fucking domino mask, like a superhero or something. <laughs> get something, you know? Uh, and we cut back briefly to them waking up, and uh, Crow's not doing so well. He's got the purple poison coughing out of his lungs. Hmm. hmm. And that's it for the episode. Uh, so the thoughts on it was good. Yeah. Stop. Lots of exposition. Uh, the Blake stuff did lighten it and kind of make it more have more momentum, I guess, going forwards. Yeah, it was nice to like we needed this exposition. I, I wouldn't say it was unnecessary, and it was the silhouettes that were used to tell the whole story of the two brothers. I thought was very interesting and creative. It was. It did feel kind of like they were trying to repeat the magic of the Four Maidens story that we got in last season. And I'm not entirely sure how necessary all of that was in terms of 
plot. I mean, it basically doesn't really come up at all this season, to be honest. Well, hearing that makes me a bit uh, now. Because mm. uh, it sounds like it would be necessary, but... Uh, you know, I like the whole silhouettes thing. Part of me wishes that it was just... You, you would zoom back from the camera. It was just Crow doing finger puppets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got the two brothers and walking over here. And he's creating, like, little birds. And he's creating, like, Grim. And... <laughs> doing shadow puppets. <laughs> but... <laughs> no, it was it was an okay episode. It wasn't any like we just had a big fight scene uh not too long ago. It was long. It does not you know, it doesn't weather repeat viewings very well. I was checking the time about halfway through cuz yeah, I've this heard is... all this information before and it's not particularly compelling a second time through. Yeah, it's like once you know it you don't need to watch this episode ever again. Pretty much. Uh, so, yeah, it's okay. I mean, there was nothing in here that was like, I really don't like this part mm. or anything. Um, I mean, John's kind of acting like a tool. Mm, yeah, I, um, yeah, I mean, I feel like we didn't need another legendary legend on top of this that's actually real after we got. Two of those. We got two of those last season. Now we have another one on top of that. You probably actually could have cut out the whole thing about the two brothers and just talked about the artifacts, because that seems to be the most important thing. Mm. And probably given more stuff on the two brothers later. Yeah. When it became more relevant, but... It would have been interesting to have Salem do that exposition. But who would she do that ex exposition to? I don't know. Maybe she recruits someone? I don't know. Uh, it just seems like... Like, Cinder obviously already knows. Does, uh, does she? Well, she knows she was after something, so... I don't know. Does she? I, she knows that she was going for the Maiden's Power, which... She yeah, got. and she knows. She knows, she knows about the they wanted Beacon Tower artifact. Down. No, I don't think she ever mentioned it at mm. any point. Thought she did. No, it was Salem that brought up the that you know they were looking for something and didn't find it. Well, I guess that's it for this episode of Zero Interest. Are we doing that now, finger snaps. We West Side storying it. Da 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 da. All right. Anyway, <laughs> when you're a jet, you're a jet. So we're gonna jet out of here. See you guys next episode. Yeah. Bye.